All right, let's talk about autism and women and the challenges and barriers to diagnosis. So as a starting point, autism is a neurodevelopmental condition. In general terms, autism presents with challenges in social interaction and communication and restrictive and repetitive behaviors and interests. However, not all autistic people fit the stereotype of what autism is as portrayed by characters in the media or as held by members of society, the wider community. In fact, some autistic women may have developed high masking skills in order to hide their differences and blend in with their neurotypical peers. Before we get to some signs on how you can spot a high masking autistic woman, I wanna start tackling probably the meatiest, most important part of this whole video, which is really delving into the known and the requiring more exploration barriers to diagnosis for autistic women. What's interesting is really the core traits for autism are the same for men and women. However, it seems one of the biggest challenges in diagnosing autistic women is that we're still operating under a diagnostic model that was designed to diagnose boys or men at best. In other words, a diagnostic model based on the observations of diagnosing boys with autism. Now this means that the signs and symptoms of autism may actually present differently for autistic women and therefore potentially be completely overlooked during the diagnostic criteria. So let's talk about some of the main reasons why autism may be underdiagnosed in women and I guess highlight some of the key barriers, some of the key challenges to diagnosis for autistic women. Let's start off with a really key one, social masking. Many autistic women have developed high masking skills. Why? Well, to simply blend in with their neurotypical peers. Further to that, it's been found that autistic women have higher levels of social motivation compared to autistic men. And this can contribute to their social masking skills. What's social motivation? Is that what you're saying? Ease up, Turbo, no worries. In general terms, social motivation is the drive, the desire to interact with others, to form social connections. And obviously, while social motivation is typically lower in autistic people, some research has found that social motivation levels seem to be higher in autistic women compared to autistic men. So it's possible that autistic women have a higher drive or desire to interact with others or to form social connections than autistic men would, which clearly contributes to their higher social masking skills. Potentially, autistic women may be more motivated to learn and mimic social behaviors to fit in with their peers. Adding to this barrier to diagnosis for high masking autistic women, some studies have found that autistic women are also better at interpreting and recognizing emotional expressions. And this is despite having similar difficulties with social interaction and communication. It's fascinating. It has been suggested, and we are gonna to get to gender in just a second, but it has been suggested that potentially autistic women may be more likely to receive social training or cues from parents, peers, friends that also contribute to them developing these social skills. Let's move on to the next big challenge to diagnosis for autistic women, gender stereotypes. I think it's relatively accepted by now that there is this gender stereotype that autism is a male condition. Now, as a result of this wrong, this outdated stereotype. Some clinicians, depending on the care factor in educating themselves and understanding the movements and advances in how we diagnose autism and in autism in general, they simply may be less likely to even consider a diagnosis of autism for girls or women. That's on the medical profession, by the way. It's also been suggested that the diagnostic criteria for autism may not accurately capture the presentation of symptoms in autistic girls and women. And why? Well, we already know about the social stuff. Autistic women tend to present differently. Further to that, autistic women may mask or camouflage their differences and challenges more effectively. You add to that healthcare professionals, not potentially understanding the unique differences in how autistic women can present. And what does that lead to? 
underdiagnosis or misdiagnosis of autistic women. Autistic women can also face additional barriers to diagnosis due to social and cultural expectations and even a stigma around gender roles and expectations. A quick example, women may be expected to be more social, more empathetic, which can then lead to their difficulties being overlooked or simply put down to shyness or they're just anxious. It's also been suggested that autistic women may have higher rates of eating disorders and other self-injurious behaviors compared to that of autistic men. This can obviously be due to many different factors. Difficulties with social processing, a greater social pressure to conform to beauty standards, or simply a coping mechanism for stress and anxiety. Another key barrier to diagnosis for autistic women is co-occurring medical conditions. It's actually been suggested that autistic women are more likely to experience co-occurring medical or health conditions than that of autistic men. Although it's also been widely suggested that autistic people may all be prone to co-occurring medical conditions. For autistic women though, the rates of co-occurring medical conditions seem to be potentially higher, and they can include things like anxiety and depression. So a challenge for autistic women is that co-occurring medical health conditions can at times overshadow their autism symptoms and lead to misdiagnosis. And this can be due in part to the unique social and emotional challenges that autistic women face, as well as the general stigma and discrimination that come with being a woman with a neurodevelopmental condition. It's also been suggested that autistic women are more likely to experience bullying and harassment than autistic men. Although all autistic people experience bullying and harassment at levels no one wants to talk about. Point being though, if autistic women do experience levels of bullying and harassment at a rate higher than autistic men, that is clearly going to contribute to mental health struggles, to co-occurring medical conditions. And again, that muddies the water that overshadows other things and leads to underdiagnosis and misdiagnosis. Honestly, we're just scratching the surface with the many challenges and barriers that women and girls face on the path towards an autism diagnosis. And frankly, we really do need to work harder towards understanding the unique experiences, the unique challenges that autistic women face and tailor diagnostic and support services accordingly. So let's have a go at increasing that understanding with some different signs. Here are some different traits that autistic women may have. And as always, talking in general terms. Let's start with social communication. One of the core features of autism is challenges with social communication and interaction. However, this may manifest differently in high masking autistic women. Why? Well, in fact, some autistic women have actually learned to mimic social cues, have even developed scripts to appear neurotypical or no different to their peers. With that said, some signs to look out for around the social communication and interaction section of an autism diagnosis. A difficulty in initiating or maintaining conversations. And for autistic women, this may be even more difficult in group settings. An unusual or repetitive use of language, and this can include a formal, even pedantic style of language. Difficulty with non-verbal communication. This can include making eye contact, reading facial expressions, social rules, or even subtle social cues. Another sign could be a tendency to take things very literally, or a general difficulty in understanding sarcasm, or irony, or metaphors. And the last sign around social communication and interaction before we move on is a difficulty switching between topics or activities. All right, let's talk about sensory processing differences. Autistic people also have differences in how they process sensory information, sensory input. Now this can include hypersensitivity, which can appear like an overreaction to sensory input, an experience that is stronger or intense than the normal experience, or hyposensitivity. So seemingly underreacting to sensory input, an experience that seems potentially disproportionately less than what you should experience from that particular sensory input. So some sensory processing signs to look out for 
for high masking autistic women. A difficulty filtering out background noise or distractions. Avoidance of certain textures, sounds or smells. An overstimulation in crowded or noisy environments. Sensory seeking behavior. Hard to give examples, but general basic examples. Rocking, spinning, that kind of stuff. Repetitive behaviors and interests can also be connected to sensory processing. And finally, a hypersensitivity to things like noise, light, sounds, textures, smells, or a difficulty with proprioception, which in simple terms is an awareness of your body position in space. Let's move on to restricted or repetitive behaviors and interests. And again, these may be less obvious in high masking autistic women, but there are signs. A sign to look out for intense or narrow interests that dominate your thoughts and conversations. Sensory or stimming behaviors. Remember, even though we've done sensory already, these types of sensory or stimming behaviors can be quite repetitive. A preference for routine and predictability and difficulty with unexpected changes or transitions. Hate transitions. And finally, a difficulty with executive functioning skills. Skills like time management, planning, organization, even prioritization. There is clearly a greater need for awareness, understanding, appreciation, acceptance, and support for autistic women by actually addressing the barriers to diagnosis and providing tailored support and resources. We can help ensure that autistic women receive the best possible care and support. If this video resonated with you, please share it. And if you have a topic suggestion you'd like me to cover in an upcoming video, let's see it in the comments below. Thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. Until my next video, thank you for watching and we'll talk soon.